just you know sometimes more extreme sometimes less but like this this like ride this roller coaster essentially of uh of making content is wild this is the freestyle way yeah it's really wild you just reminded me i i had a guest on the podcast um he's a writer he's a funny guy uh ryan orico is his name and he said that in terms of writing, somebody has to suffer. It's either going to be the reader or the writer. So uh, you you want the reader to not suffer, so you better take it take it on. Um, and and you said something interesting about um, this idea of finishing. You you need to remember why you started, so you know how to finish. I think that's 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 huge. I I, I uh, highly relate to that. And it's. Um, yeah, it's an ongoing process, and and this idea of of having a wealth of information to share, but not sometimes knowing what that that information is uh, to share, is 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 one of the biggest challenges I think somebody in a, in our position uh, faces. Because if you're if you especially if you're isolated at home and you're not in a certain environment that brings those questions up. Uh, it's the thing that creates a big gap between you and your your potential audience or your even your current audience and uh, that's something that i i i i failed terribly at which was when i got to the point where i was starting to get some kind of notoriety popularity within the crossfit scene it got a little crazy because people treat you like you know something that they don't know and you're just like, I'm just a dude trying to figure it out and sharing it with you. And you just happen to have gravitated towards it in a way that was useful for you. And I'm so thankful that's the case. And although my ego was like, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this attention and recognition. Uh, the essence of myself always felt lonely and disconnected. So I kind of became an island. I became a shell of myself when I showed up at places and I could do these seminars. I mean, just so people get an idea, I remember putting out a seminar tour and overnight uh, it basically sold, um, I think it was like 50% of the capacity sold out. It was like $67,000 all of a sudden in my bank account, just overnight. And then I, I, I sell this thing out, it was lucrative, but I go on this tour and I'm totally depressed. I'm just like, what? yeah, what am I doing? Just alone in these hotels and I'm going to these seminars where I I'm too tired to train. I don't want to connect with anybody. Um, yeah, it it's just miserable. And then realizing that the information that, that I was sharing, although valuable, for me was no longer exciting because it was just old news. Right, and that's something I grapple with as well. Um, don't mean to cut you off, but like once I made a piece of content and like, uh, you, you know, like you, you see like someone will say like how to do pull-ups, right? Or how to get your first pull-up, right? Okay. I made a video on that. Cool. But like, you'll see other people constantly make videos regurgitating the same information, maybe in a slightly different format, a little different words, but like, I can't, I, I don't enjoy doing that. You know, whether they're doing that for the algorithm or whatever, because they know that's a very popular topic, it's like hats off to them because that really, um, it's, it's something I, I've, I've had trouble with doing as well, right? Like it's not as exciting once you release, like you wrote the freestyle book, right? On these different movements that you think are very practical. Imagine you did that again, it would just like, uh, slight differences and it would some people can do it i i can't but yeah sorry I, I, no it's cool yeah and i'm yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, that that kind of rings true to you and i think the where i'm trying to get to is that if you look at your content as a piece of art and um mm -hmm. a standalone uh long lasting uh contribution in some way that just is an extension of you your knowledge that you can you can make it belong to an ecosystem of things that you do of content services products uh, just ideas that can feed into one another and when you know how to place that piece of content strategically in a way 
that feeds in and out of an ecosystem of services, products, content. Now you don't have to repeat the content unless you have Perfect. come to a new conclusion and it needs to be revisited. Mm. And, right. and, and that right. is key. That's how you make That's talking ideal. about push-ups exciting again. But uh -huh. I, I failed to do that because my, my, I, myself, I was depleted. I didn't have any more energy. I was just, I just wanted away from the fitness industry. Just get me out of here. I hate uh -huh. it here. Uh -huh. So I, I, I neglected the people that got me to where I was uh -huh. and that sucks. And I yeah. also neglected the thing that, um, set me up for success. I mean, it, Every this is this is the craziest part. Every single week, I get people either sharing my book online or talking about something that I um, addressed in videos twelve years ago. Uh -huh. I'm like, holy crap! This this thing still resonates. Yeah, you're timeless, and that's crazy. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, what did I miss here? You know, like what, <laughs> where did I go wrong? Uh, but and and it was nowhere. It, it, there's there's nothing you can really do, but what I what I'm trying to get to is uh, to two two parts. One is if you are genuinely cr creating and contributing without the expectation that you're going to create some conversion, right? You're probably uh, creating the best shit you possibly can. Like that's yeah. good stuff. Uh, and the other part is observe that which you're creating and how people interact with it and then serve those people. Don't try to create new markets, new audiences. Serve those uh -huh. people and then allow them to uh, inform you as to how you can continue to do the thing that you love the most, which is maybe uh, sharing an idea or sharing an, uh, a thought around uh, uh -huh. a movement practice or anything else that you may be creating. And I think that is uh, extremely powerful to be able to grow with your audience. And here's a practical example for you. So when I when I first came into the CrossFit space, I just happened to have a lot of information around gymnastics, but I was uh, a rebel. So I was like, fuck gymnastics. Who cares about gymnastics? I, I'm, I'm the freestyle athlete. I, you don't have to do a handstand with your legs straight. You can do it like this. And CrossFit was just a perfect place for me to talk about gymnastics that way. And uh -huh. uh, it just kind of clicked. Okay. So I, I, I got I got invited to do my first seminar. And um it was a four hour seminar and the gym paid me eight hundred bucks. Okay, they paid me eight hundred bucks to go into the and that was the most amount of amount of money I had made per hour uh in my, you know, gymnastics fitness coaching career. Sure. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And uh, so I decided going forward that, you know, if, uh, if people are interested in this, I should do more of these. But what if I just sold the tickets? And this was uh, not my my own doing. I had a business partner that I was uh, working with at the time. And uh -huh. so we, we, we took uh, hold of the whole business and we said, we'll sell the tickets. We'll manage the sales, the marketing, the whole thing. People will host us and we'll give them something in exchange, either uh, spots or a percentage of the the income. So all of a sudden I went from 800 bucks to uh, making uh, between 10 and 15,000 uh, bucks per day. That's a big uh -huh. jump. So you, you definitely scaled there just by taking control of the whole thing. But here's the deal. I showed up at these seminars without a plan. Oh. Okay, I just showed up and I thought, well, I may talk about That's these hard things. To believe. Well, it, it's it's uh, literally in the car. Uh, I would I would take like, you know, a piece of paper and I would write down like a, a little framework. I'm like, I'm gonna use this framework, and that would uh -huh. be the thing. Uh, in fact, one of the frameworks, position, movement, purpose, ended up becoming the framework for my book, and then I expanded uh -huh. upon that. But I'm, the the way that I did it was by asking questions. So I started asking questions oh, and through the questions, people would reflect to me what they needed. And then I would use whatever expertise I had in helping them get their needs met. Eventually uh -huh. I did this so many times that the questions were the same for everybody. The same. needs were the same for everybody. So I would go uh -huh. to these places and now I would simply regurgitate 
what everybody had told me they needed and every step that I had found along the way just perfected it. And people uh-huh. were like, oh my goodness, Carl is reading my mind. What is right. happening? You are legendary. And I'm like, no, I That's just cool. did a ton of reps. <laughs> right, you did a ton of reps in this uh, in this realm. Yeah, so I think when it comes to, if we just circle this back to creating the best content and growing with your audience is, Continue to be curious about them. Continue to be curious about the person. I mean, that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you. Uh Because you were genuinely connecting to something that I said, and I'm like, I want to know you. This is the Freestyle Way. (laughs) 